I was also thinking in terms of the automated expansion of the knowledge base, you mentioned NLU. This is very early days in the machine learning space of this, but self-supervised learning methods, you know, you have these language models, GPT-3 and so on, that just read the internet yes. and they form representations that can then be mapped to something useful. The question is, what is the useful thing? Uh, like they're now playing with a pretty cool thing called OpenAI Codex, which is generating programs from documentation. Okay, that's yes. kind of useful, it's cool. But my question is, can it be used to generate um, in part, maybe with some human supervision, uh, psych-like assertions, help feed psych more assertions from this giant body of internet data? Yes, that that is in fact one of our goals is how can we harness machine learning? How can we harness natural language processing um, to increasingly automate the knowledge acquisition process, the growth of psych. And that's what I meant by priming the pump. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, if you, you sort of learn things at the fringe of what you know already. Um, right. You learn this new thing is similar to what you know already, and here are the differences and the new things you had to learn about it and so on. So the more you know, the more and more easily you can learn new things. But unfortunately, inversely, if you don't really know anything, <laughs> then it's really hard to learn anything. <laughs> and so um, if you're not careful, if you start out with too small um, uh, sort of a core to start this process, um, it never really takes off. And so that's why I view this as a pump priming exercise to get a big enough manually produced, even though that's a kind of ugly duckling technique, mm -hmm. put in the elbow grease to produce a large enough core um, that you will be able to do all the kinds of things you're imagining um, without uh, without sort of um, ending up with the kind of um, wacky brittlenesses that we see, for example, in um, GPT-3, um, where um, it, uh, uh, you know, you'll tell it a story about, um, um, you know, someone uh, uh, putting a poison um uh, you know, plotting to poison someone and so on. And then the, um, you know, then, you know, GPT-3 says, oh, what's, you say, what's the very next sentence? And the next sentence is, oh yeah, that person then drank the poison they just put together. It's like, that's probably not what happened mm -hmm. <laughs> or someone. Or um, if you go to Siri and, um, um, you know, I think I have, uh, you know, where, where can I go for um, help with my um, um, alcohol problem or something, it'll come back and say, I found seven liquor stores near you, right. you know, <laughs> and, you know, so on. So, you know, it's one of these things where, um, yes, it may be helpful um, most of the time. It may even be correct most yeah. of the time, but if it doesn't really understand what it's saying, and if it doesn't really understand why things are true and doesn't really understand how the world world works, then some fraction of the time it's going to be wrong. Mm. Now, if your only goal is to sort of find relevant information, like search engines do, um, then being right 90% of the time is fantastic. That's unbelievably great. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, if your goal is to like um, you know, save the the life of your child who has some medical problem, or your goal is to uh, be able to drive, you know, for the next 10,000 hours of driving without getting into a fatal accident and so on, then, you know, um, error rates down at the 10% level or even the 1% level are not really acceptable. Mm -hmm. I like the model of what that learning happens at the edge. And then you kind of think of knowledge as the sphere. So, uh, if you want a large sphere because the uh, the learning is happening on the surface. It, it, exactly. So you have the the what you can learn next increases quadratically as the <laughs> diameter of that sphere um, but goes up. It, it's nice because you think when you know nothing, it's like you can learn anything. But the reality, not really. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you know if you know nothing, you can really learn nothing. <laughs> exactly. uh, you can appear to learn. So I'll, I'll also, um, what, one of the um, anecdotes uh, I could go back and um, give you about why, uh, why I feel so strongly about this personally mm -hmm. um, was um, in um, 1980, 81, um, my daughter Nicole was born and she's actually doing fine now. But when she was a baby, um, she was diagnosed as having meningitis and um, doctors wanted to do all these scary things um, and... Uh, my wife and I were very um, worried, and we could not get a meaningful answer from her doctors 
about exactly why they believed this, what the alternatives were, and so on. And fortunately, a friend of mine, Ted Shortliff, was another um, assistant professor in computer science um, at Stanford at the time. And he'd been building a program called Mycin, which was a medical diagnosis program that happened to specialize in um, uh, blood um, infections like meningitis. And so he had privileges at Stanford Hospital because he was also an MD. Um, and so uh, we got hold of her chart and we put in her case and it came up with exactly the same diagnoses and exactly the same therapy recommendations. But the difference was because it was a knowledge-based system, a rule-based system, it was able to tell us step by step by step um, why um, this was the diagnosis and step by step why this was the best um, um, therapy and the best um, procedure to, um, um, to to do for her and so on. And there was a real epiphany because that made all the difference in the world. Instead of blindly having to trust in authority, we were able to understand what was actually going on. And um, so at that at that time, I realized that that really is what was missing in computer programs was that even if they got things right, because they didn't really understand um, the way the world works and why things are the way they are, uh, they weren't able to give explanations of their answer. Um, you know, and you know, it's one thing to to use a machine learning system that says this is what you should. You know, I I think you should get this operation, and you say why, and it says you know 0.83, and you say no in more detail why, and it says 0.831. You know, okay, <laughs> that's not really very compelling, and that's yeah. not really very helpful.